So, hello and welcome to lesson 15 in our study of functional analysis. So, in this video, we are going to show that the differential operator is not bounded and also show other two proofs. Okay, all right. So, one question the question one is show that if the differential operator is not bounded using the definition of bounded operators. And the second one is let x equals this show that the supreme on x right is a norm then the third question we'll solve is to show that ac plus bd is less than or equal to root of a squared plus b squared times root of c squared plus d squared okay so i'm going to solve these three questions and that is going to mark the end of series of videos for this course of ours introduction to functional analysis okay so let's solve the first question so we are to show that the differential operator is not bounded using the definition of bounded operators so solution you know we let t the transformation be such that we have this relation here right with a less than b be the differential operator as defined as so what this means is that you know when you have s prime when you have x a function which is just one differentiable and you differentiate it it's only be differentiable again right so that's the reason we have c1 here and c0 here and this is defined as tx equals x prime okay so that's the linear transformation on it so note that an operator on norm spaces is said to be bounded when this relation holds where c is a real number okay right so for the purpose of our proof we are going to take a b to be the interval close interval zero one and let n be any natural number right so we will consider the sequence f of n x equals s power n okay so note that the transformation was given by t x equals x prime so that means here it will be t f n of x equals when you find that the, the derivative of x n we get n x n minus one so this is going to be the transformation now i hope you get it when we take this f to be our function so if we equip this with the infinity norm then we would have so we put the infinity norm on this we we'll have this here and that is equal to the supremum of the value that we have here right and you can see that x is contained in the close interval 0 1 so the larger value s can take here is 1 so that means that when you take s power n minus 1 the highest value s can take is 1 and 1 power n minus 1 will give us 1 and we have n here so 1 times n will give us n so it means that the infinity norm here will give us n and when we also find the infinity norm of the function xn itself right that one is going to give us one to the power n which will give us one that one will give us one so now when we take the ratio of these two we will get n over n which is equal to n okay so by this assumption right realize that this is true for any n right but there is no c for which we will have this relation okay we wouldn't have any relation you can see that here when we decide to send this thing we will have this it's equal to this but there is no c for which we will have this relation here and there is a relation to show that t is bounded so it means that yes the differential operator is not bounded okay 
So this shows that the differential operator is not bounded. So now let us take the second question. So the second question says we should let x be equal to this. And we should show that the supremum on x is a norm. Okay. Alright. So you know this is our space x, right? And the infinity norm or the supreme norm is such that when you put it on a function f of x, it's equal to the supremum of the absolute value of f of x, but our x is contained in a closed interval 0, 1. Right. So this is our f of x, right? Okay. And it is obvious that this here will be zero if and only if s is zero a very very obvious if f of x you know s can take values between zero to one if you take zero that means f of x will be zero and that is when the norm will be zero then it is clear that aside x taking zero the rest will give s values which will be greater than zero so we have shown that The norm is non negative. Okay. All right. So the third one for us to show is to show absolute homogeneity. Okay. So to show that it is absolutely homogeneous. So when we put a scalar alpha inside this, we are going to get this. And it's equal to the supremum of. So we put our 5 of x. I hope you get it. All right. So this is very simple from definition. Okay, so we can bring the magnitude of alpha out and we have this. And we can bring that one out of the supremum and we have this, right? And the whole of this is. So we can write this in this way. We show that this is equal to this. And we've been able to show that it is absolutely homogeneous. So for triangle inequality, we need to show this. Right, so when we take the infinity norm of f plus j is equal to the supremum of what you can see here. Right, and this is less than or equal to, so it's when you have a plus b, this is always less than or equal to a, less than or equal to b. So when we separate this into two then we can have less than or equal to here because of you know we've separated them here and when you multiply through by the soup right you will get each of them having their own component and this corresponds to this and this corresponds to that so you've been able to show that this is less than or equal to this which is a triangle inequality so you've been able to show that yes when you have this and you put the supremum on it it's a norm or king so the last thing we'll be doing in this video is to show this. That AC plus BC, AC plus BD is less than or equal to root of A squared plus B squared times root of C squared plus D squared. Okay. All right. So let's do that here. So let us let X be given by AB, a vector S be given by AB, and a vector Y be given by CD. So we know that from the cosine rule, we know this. But from the cauchy schwarz inequality, we know that the dot product x dot y is less than or equal to the norm of x times the norm of y. Okay. All right. So when you find the dot product of x and y, the vectors x and y, to so give us a times c plus b times d. All right. I hope you can get that. Okay. Then. You know, we have this x, we have this y. When we put the two norm on x and the two norm on y, the two norm on x will give us this. And the two norm on y will give us this. So, when we put everything inside the cauchy schwarz inequality, right, we would have this. I hope you get it. Yes. So we would have this. Which shows that because this was the dot product of x and y. 
and it's less than or equal to to the two norm of x times the two norm of y and we've been able to show this relation so thank you very much and all the best in your upcoming examination okay all right